the Nikon Z63, is this the camera you have been waiting for? Or are there some specs that you've been wanting to have in this and that are missing? Let's find out about it right now. Many of you have been asking about this camera for months and months and months, and here it is in my hands the newly announced Z63. Now this is gonna be an overall kind of a preview of the camera system because we have to be in a an area with no people. So I am literally in the jungle here in Singapore. Nobody around except birds. And of course our Nikon reps behind us who are helping me out with this video. With that said, we'll be doing a full review after this is announced to give you more of a hands-on in depth in terms of low light performance, video performance, how this partially stacked sensor works, all that will come into play. We're just gonna talk about top line specs on this camera, some of the features that I absolutely love, some of the things I wish were inside of it. Sorry, Nikon, but there's a couple things I wish were inside of it. But anyway, let's get down to talking about this right now. The Z63 is a culmination of the Z9, the Z8, and the ZF, yes. The subject detection and manual focus that we saw in the ZF that a lot of us loved, especially myself, is now here in the Z63. But when it comes to the Z8 and Z9, you're still getting those fast frames, the burst modes, 20, 30 frames per second. You're getting that subject detection that's inside of those cameras. Of course, though, it is not as precise and in the sense you can't choose bird or animal. It's all encapsulated into one, but you're now getting that here in the Z63 in terms of video. A lot of you video people have been asking, is it going to be a crop in 4K? The answer is only in 4K 120. Outside of that, 4K 60 and NRAW ProRes, there is no crop whatsoever. It even shoots 5.4K and 6K respectively. No crop. The only time you get a crop is in 4K 120. That's a 1.5 times crop. But to me personally, I don't really shoot 4K 120 in this era of TikTok and all these fast uh, cutting videos. Do we have time to shoot 10, 15 seconds of 4K 120? Literally, we don't, because those videos have to be consumed within seconds, so 4K60 is enough for me. You can update the camera now without the need of an SD card. All that's coming up in just a bit. But let's talk about the body design first and foremost. On the top, it looks like a Z8. It has that sort of that angular approach that we see here on the EVF that we saw on the Z8 and the Z9 respectively. That design language is now carried over here into the Z63, which is very nice. The grip is much larger. It feels very good in my hand. I've got larger hands and uh, my pinky has a place here at the bottom of this, which is very nice. There's also an external grip that does come with this. It's a vertical grip and that also is backwards compatible, by the way, with the Z62 and Z72. But the grip for the Z62 and Z72 will not fit to the Z63. Little confusing, I know, but at least Nikon is saying we can go backwards compatible, but we can't go forwards compatible. Fair enough. We have a flip out rotatable display. A lot of you have been asking for that. It is here. Now the next question is, why didn't they do flip up, tilt up, all that stuff? Look guys, it is what it is. We've got this, you're happy. For you video people out there, it is what it is. For now for you photographers, I hear you. Just like the tilt up and down, I get you. But it's still, you still can use it. And the display on this is absolutely phenomenal. It's high resolution, it's bright. And for those who've been wondering, it is even more so than the Z6 II. We have to talk about EVF. This is the first of its kind. I don't know of an EVF that is this bright. It makes my TV look like crap. It's 4,000 nits at its ultimate brightness. 4,000 nits. That's brighter than any other camera system out there. And it's a 5.76 million dot EVF. We've been wanting that from Nikon. Now, one thing about Nikon I can say that I've appreciated even on the Z8 and Z9, they have a dedicated pipeline that's actually going to give you better optics and a better image quality going into the EVF versus other camera systems, even at 5.76. I always felt that the Z8 and Z9 looked better at 3.69 than others did at 5.76 respectively. This at 5.76 is friggin' phenomenal. So if you wanna magnify in, if you're doing something that's critical focusing and you need that, this EVF is going to be a dream for a lot of you out there. And at 4,000 nits, no matter where you're at, whatever lighting condition, bright daylight, obviously not today here, it's overcast in Singapore, but even lower light situations, if you're doing critical focusing for video, this is going to be a godsend. Thank you for adding this in here. The back of the camera is very much part and parcel of what we saw here on the Z8 for the most part. The same battery door, quick access to the Z8, not like the Z9, which you need to pull down with your thumb and kind of push out. I wish they would fix that because it makes it very, very hard to use sometimes. This is great. You have CF Express Type B and uh, UHS two card slot inside of it. So for those who want to do dual CF Express Type B, I'm in that camp. 
but this is sort of that kind of that hybrid camera system. So you're going to get the, you know, the UHS-2 for a lot of you out there who don't or can't afford to go into a Sea of Express Type D card yet, which I understand. They are still pr quite pricey. Um, outside of that though, you have the new processors inside of this, everything like the Z8 and Z9 respectively, you're getting this in as well. Pre-capture, all that is coming into play. So if you haven't seen my last Z8 uh, video that I did with the new firmware update with the bird detection and all the in improved autofocusing, that algorithm is now here. And that means that we're gonna get some of the best in class autofocusing out of any camera system in my personal opinion. Yes, I found the bird detection, the firmware from the Z8 better than I was seeing in some of the more alpha cameras out there from Sony. Sorry guys, that's gonna be a bit of a uh, controversial topic, but I found it to be true and I had video to showcase that. But with that said, we have some new elements inside of this camera, which I think for video people, you're going to appreciate. Not only do you get 6K, 5.4K and all that, that I said respectively, you can shoot at NRAW, ProRes, yada, yada, yada. But for audio files out there, you have a new internal amp on this 24-bit audio line as well, so you're gonna get better audio recording out of the Z6 then you might get out of the Z8 and Z9. That was one of the things that I realized recording on the Z8 and Z9 when I would be out in the field, I'm using, let's say the DJI mic, for example, is that I felt my audio didn't feel as full. It didn't sound as full as I wanted to. Now with the Z6 III, that's all gonna change. Much more improved amp, so greatly appreciate on that. Full size HDMI, you've got your uh, USB-C, and we got your headphone jack, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all coming into play on this. That's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the sensor on this for a second, because this is a first of its kind sensor. It's a 24.5 partially stacked sensor. Partially stacked. Why not go just fully stacked? Well, this is a new technology that Nikon is trying to try out and see how it works in the real world. We haven't had any real world um, challenges against it yet. What they're saying is you're gonna get less rolling shutter course than not having a stack sensor, but it won't be as good as the Z8 and Z9. How much is that actually true? I don't know. So it's an interesting way to go about this because you would think, why don't they just do a fully stacked 24.5 megapixel sensor since those are already out there in the market. So we'll have to find out what the reason is behind that, but um, you know, give a shot and see what it's like. But uh, that would probably be the one thing a lot of you out there will probably be questioning a lot is why partially stacked? Is there a benefit? And if you do know, let me know in the comment section below. Now, personally for me, would there be any upgrades I would want to see on the Z6 III that are not in this camera? Just one. I do wish it was 32 megapixels. I know 24.5 is more than enough for everybody out there. And it's been a, it's been a constant for years after year after year after year. But from a marketing perspective, the Z6 was 24 megapixels. The Z6 II was 24 megapixels. The ZF is 24 megapixels. Now the Z6 III is 24 megapixels. So I kind of wish they would just bump it up to 32. Even though, I mean, it does help a little bit with cropping power, especially if you could be shooting wildlife or, you know, sporting events. It does help to have a little bit more cropping power in that. But I think from that marketing perspective of new buyers out there going, but isn't that the same sensor as the Z6 II and the ZF? And, you know, for us, we can explain it to them. But for the average buyer out there, they may not understand that. So again, that would be my only caveat on this camera system. Outside of that, I think it's fully stacked in terms of features, in terms of the way that it feels, it's fantastic. It's solidly built, it's more compact. In terms of the size, it's almost basically the same size as the Z6 II, except the grip is a little bit larger, but it feels really good in the hand. And this has been one of the things when I travel and I'm going on events, I want a smaller camera system when I'm on the go. The Z8 is fantastic, I'm recording on it right now. The Z9, obviously we know that's more for professional outings, bigger battery, gonna give you more robustness in terms of you know heat management when you're going to video. But sometimes you just want a small camera that you can just kind of run and gun and just shoot video like this. And the Z6 III is now gonna fit that bill. Whereas the Z8 was slightly a little bit too large for that. This would be something I would definitely put in the camera back. So with that, let's take some photos with this. Again, JPEG only, can't test out the RAWs. And then after that, I'll then talk to you about a new feature that's coming to this camera system. I kind of hinted at it a little bit before. It's a first of its kind. It's gonna really change the way we use our Nikon cameras going forward. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So trying out the animal eye tracking on that dog just now, it just sticks on like glue, right? Now, that's a light colored, you know, fur dog, so it works better with black eyes, but I will say that it feels rock solid. The image stabilization out of this, I notice it right away, but the EVF is just absolutely gorgeous. 
it's gorgeous and it's bright. I mean, I haven't even pumped this up to 4,000 nits. I could try it, see what that's like, but this thing's okay. The first thing you're gonna notice is the EVF. That is gonna be the first thing, and of course, the ergonomics, which feel fantastic. But let's bump, bump up the EVF now. Let's see how bright this thing gets. And uh, monitor brightness. We're gonna go to viewfinder brightness, auto, manual. And here we go. Oh, come on. This is insane. You almost squinted so bright. You're like squinting inside the EVF. This is really, really nice. Oh, it's super bright. It is super bright. You know, I would say when you're in a lower light situation and it may be like, uh, you're, you know, sometimes you come this across these things at nighttime or you're shooting a concert or maybe let's say you're in a nightclub or a bar and you can't necessarily gauge what's in focus or not, you pump this thing up, it's like night vision. Unbelievable. Wow. Again, we're shooting a JPEG. Wow, the EVF on this is phenomenal. You do notice a difference. I thought the 3.69 million dot EVF with the Z8 and Z9 was good. This, Z8 owners and Z9 owners are gonna be upset. They're gonna be banging on Nikon's door, give us a 5.76 million dot. This is really, really good. This is beautiful. Mr. Miyagi's tree, bonsai tree. Bonsai! It kind of works. I'm talking about a Japanese camera and bonsai. Hmm. Didn't think about that just until, until now. So you may be asking yourself, why didn't I talk about image stabilization just yet? Well, that's what we're here to talk about up to eight stops of image stabilization now inside the Z6 III. Now the previous crown winner was the ZF with 7.5 stops, depending on the lens that you use. Only certain lenses compatible with the ZF, obviously with the VR system would work on that. Now up to eight stops with the Z6 III. And also you have the pinpoint VR control. What does that mean exactly? Well, previously with um, other camera systems out there, it only stabilizes the center of the frame. But with Nikon, and they've introduced this with the ZF, is that based on where you're focusing, it will, it will kind of stabilize that area. So if I'm in the corner of the frame over here, it would stabilize here, and I'm over here, it would stabilize here. That was only available on the ZF. Now we're seeing it here on the Z6 III. So again, features from the Z8, Z9, ZF, are all coming into this camera system, which makes it a very formidable uh, full frame hybrid camera in the marketplace at a lower megapixel. It's gonna give you fantastic image quality. Let's also talk about ISO performance because a lot of you have been asking about that as well. Is it a dual gain sensor? The answer to that question is I don't know, but the ISO range is from 100 up to 64,000. Previously it was 51,200. This is now from 100 to 64,000. Of course, there is an extended ISO range, but this is the ISO that you can use on this. So again, it's gonna give you more in terms of lower light performance. Again, I don't know if it's dual gain sensor yet. We'll find out in due time. Somebody will find that out, but I can tell you based on my limited testing that, uh, and I can show you that when the full review comes out, is that this ISO performance is actually really good. And I actually found the ISO performance even in the Z8 and Z9 to be very good as well. So. If it's already good on those cameras and the ZF, I proceed to be fantastic here on the Z6 III. So something new that Nikon has added to the Z6 III is flexible color picture control. And that means you can fine tune the colors inside of these profiles respectively. Now, let's talk about updating the camera. Nikon has heard your complaints. Why do I always have to use it? SD card? Well, it's not as bad as Sony. That's a whole different ball game altogether. You gotta plug the camera in and wait and have a coffee and a luncheon. Anyway, neither here nor there. Now you can update the firmware through Nikon Imaging Cloud and they can sync directly to the camera without the need of an SD card. That's right. Based on the internal memory inside this camera system and the way that it connects to Nikon Imaging Cloud, you can now update the camera directly, which is very cool. And another feature, which is absolutely awesome, and I think a lot of you out there have been wanting something like this. We've been seeing that you can upload some images to frame IO from Adobe respectively through various different camera companies. What about Google Drive? What about Dropbox? What about OneDrive? With the Z6 III, 
You can now upload images from your camera to your online storage uh, preferred company. So if it's Google Drive, which I use, OneDrive from Microsoft, Dropbox, you can now do that. RAW and JPEG. Video, not yet. Patience, Padawan. It takes time. 4K is gonna take a long time to upload. But RAW and JPEG can now be uploaded from the camera by Wi-Fi. How cool is that? Anyway, those are just some of the uh, the top line specs here on the Z63. Again, a full review will be coming very, very soon. I am sweating like crazy here in the jungle in Singapore. I'm gonna walk around, take some photos, give you more close-up shots of the camera system, and yeah, enjoy. All right, so we're gonna try the low light performance here. I'm at 32,000 ISO. I'm at, this is about 8,000 ISO. Let me just. Anyway, guys, those are my first impressions here of the Z6 III. It's kind of an overview of the camera system. Again, when I get it for a full review, we'll really dive deeper into the image quality, performance, the partially stacked sensor, the ISO and lower light situations. We're gonna do all that, but this is just kind of an overview because this is an, a product that uh, has been in high demand and we have to be in a very quiet, secluded place to talk about it at this point in time. But if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, more content on the way. Thanks again for the support and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.